Hello guys and welcome to what seems to be another one of my videos. So I know the title of uh, this video is kind of strange but I'm trying to kind of get around this circuit and it, it was always in my head what was going on with this track. Why do I have to use the curbs so much? And by the way, if you haven't really noticed, we are dealing with an ex Formula 1 world champion kinda in GT7 I guess but yeah we are talking about this scenario and we are always talking about the curbs on this track so it's about the chicane about the other curbs pretty much all there is about the curbs so it's always curbs 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 and basically you sometimes you don't even know when you're losing time so this race was pretty interesting I mean, I was in second place, I really didn't have much practice at all, I mean, I just tried to get around the track, but what it seemed to be the problem was always the chicane. I always seemed to be kind of getting time in the chicane because my Supra was stable, but Rico, or Nico, when, I mean, whatever you want to call him, I mean, pretty much, yeah, I, I, did, I was kind of confused at that point, but yeah, he was doing not very well through the chicane, and I was always picking up time there. And just as I thought he was kind of pulling away, he would always do kind of a little mistake. Kind of. I'm talking about a little mistake. I mean, losing about three or four tenths just in one corner. I mean, sometimes he could do kind of a bigger mistake. Sometimes was would be kind of a little mistake. But overall, he would pull away because yeah, he really had game. pace. I mean, his qualifying pace was absolutely amazing. But just as he got through the chicane, it was always this BMW. And eventually... He, yeah, he always lose time. He would always lose time and, and just the like gap would go from literally 1.5 to one... No, actually below one, uh, one second and even into maybe half a second. So I was just keep picking up honest, a lot of time, really, really but, but... Yeah, I was just picking up time by staying clean. So it was kind of... I think it was kind of frustrating for him because he was in the lead and he was always kind of... Whoa. You know, making those little mistakes. This around. car was so unbelievably we unpredictable. We, you will see in the next couple of minutes of this video. So, yeah, it's very hard to go over the curbs with the BMW. So Supra is very stable and I think it was kind of a better option for the race. I mean, I think you could pull a little Just bit more out of the car if, you're, if you were using the BMW. But it was much easier to make a mistake and eventually this all led to being consistent always. on this track and the gap was really coming down i mean i was you know 1.5 seconds ahead at one point and it really came down to 0 0.5 even 0 0.4 at, at one point so he was really chasing me he had some pace to attack me and you know eventually go for the lead but yeah as he got very very close i mean it was always that one little thing mistakes i, I mean it's not really a, a little thing if we're talking about it in the, that way but yeah, if you make a mistake here, you're just gonna lose a lot of time. So basically, if you don't hit the curb right, you're losing like half a second. So I, I don't think this track is quite right in many, many ways, but this is just the one that I would kind of... I would really flatten out the curbs or, you know, just try to make them slippery or something. But eventually he got into literally yeah, less than two tenths, but we got the chicane, so... Yeah, not really much that he can do there. So I'm just cutting the chicane because this car is super stable. So the Supra is the circuit is just um, I mean, yeah, it's quick. It's stable and it's just one of those cars that are OP I mean you can use the BMW. It's good But the Supra was really the one that I liked and eventually the one that got me a couple of wins on this track It was pretty good if you just think about it like that but yeah it was always about this section and a couple of other sections but yeah curbs and you will see why eventually you will eventually see why curbs and also one thing with this car it's unpredictable which i said multiple times in this video and he lost it he almost lost it i don't know how he saved this one but it was almost out of the track so barely if he you know just did one millisecond later he would have he would just spin or something but uh, yeah he saved it in the end there. but i 
kind of extended my lead and eventually okay. won that race. So I had a bit of a time in between the races as well. So I did 31.2 and dropped it down to 31.055, which was kind of decent time to get me P3 in the next race. And this race was kind of pretty good one. So eventually, yeah, eventually this will turn out to be kind of a huge success for me, but not for the others, I guess. But always, I always had cold tires and they were always pulling away from me at this point. So I just didn't really know what, you know, what to do. Maybe the Supra is slightly too understeery, if you're talking about it like that. I mean, yeah, it's kind of takes time to warm up the tires. But BMW, it seems to be one of the cars that cannot really be handled that well. And just off the curb, going on the power and spinning out. So, I didn't see myself in this position, but I got really curbs of that, I guess. I just got into second place, and we should really rename the thumbnail of this video to curbs of that, not really curb, but yeah, it, it's really curbs of that, just when I'm thinking about it like that, yeah. It is, it is really curbs of that. I mean, eventually, Rico or Nico made a mistake, and it just... Whoa unbelievably sideways it's just turns oh in and just again he started drifting and once again i found myself in first mistake. place i couldn't yeah i just uh, didn't do much I, I just basically stayed on the track without making a mistakes and, and eventually got myself in first place but my lead extended oh. and it's extended over four seconds and this is you know just when i was watching the replay i found out why and this race was kind of interesting because I didn't really had to push that much but, but at the same time it could serve as kind of a learning curve for me but like it was a win so like I wasn't really person. overstressed so by all of that very, was very happening around me uh, no, and actually, I got into first the same. I mean <laughs> really without doing much I got myself into first place but yeah it is what it is I guess sometimes you just have to stay on the track to you know to get something out of the race but much, much okay this race uh, was I think the it was slightly on a different level. I mean, this is uh, Quentin and Brea. I mean, they're just incredibly quick top split drivers. But again, I was always kind of getting closer in the chicken. I was always just pulling the dead two tenths or maybe even three tenths. And th this one point I got really, really close to Brea. I mean, just close enough to go for a move. He closed down the inside, which was kind of smart because it's really, really hard going on the outside. And he parked himself on the exit of this corner, which again, kind of compromised my exit. And yeah, he kind of kept this place. This was a really, really smart decision from him. And yeah, now we were just driving around like this, not really making that much impact on the race at all. I mean, yeah, just and like a couple of laps later and this is <laughs> unbelievable it wasn't really unbelievable but it lasted i lost it no, he and he lost it, he also lost it. so we we both lost it no. i mean it was kind of unbelievable that it happened to both of us in literally the same corner but yeah just look at this and kind of a you know the corner really and whole of the smash and all of that turned him in the right direction but happen? he also had some damage on the front bumper as well as i did but I just got myself into fifth place, really couldn't do much, and eventually kind of caught up with uh, with the pack, but it was it was very, very late, I mean. But just thinking about it, it uh, yeah, really so happened close, to both so of us away. in the same corner on the same lap. <laughs> and I, I was just thinking 18, about it, 20. like, what, what are the odds? But uh, I guess the odds on this one are pretty high, 6, 6, I guess so. But okay, the next one was also really, really good. I had Quinton just in front of me, and... I found myself in kind of the sweet spot. I don't know when, you know, just when you're racing and all of a sudden you find yourself kind of fully concentrated, like fully into the game and you know, the lap times oh God, are really, really good. Time. So it's kind of a rhythm. I wouldn't really call it the rhythm. It's something, I don't know, it's har it's very hard to describe that feeling, but just getting that flow of the car, the car naturally goes through the turns and eventually you're pulling up some very, very fast lap times. And I was kind of able to stay with Quentin. I was, I mean, I was even surprised at this point because I know he's very, very quick and eventually he might be one of the quickest guys out here. I mean, in general, in the world and yeah. I mean, just being in that position so you can follow someone like that, it kind of feels right. It kind of feels good. 
it doesn't just feel right it just I, I think it just feels good but you know on the other side i mean he also made a couple of mistakes i mean i was still you know i was still behind him i was still less than a second behind so which allowed me kind of to stay you know stay with uh, stay with him and basically pull some decent lap times and eventually maybe find myself in the position where i want to be kind of if he i'm saying if he makes a mistake on this track which is highly uh, it's kind of it's i wouldn't say it's highly unlikable it's very unlikable that someone will make a mistake on this one because if you want to get a good lap as i said before in the opening of this video you just gotta pull like an amazing an amazing lap over and over and over again and go over the curbs over and over and over again without making a mistake which is yeah very very difficult but yeah, I found myself like two seconds behind him. He did a couple of mistakes and eventually he almost lost it. And, you know, just as I was watching this replay, I couldn't believe what he oh, has done oh, at this okay. point. You know, just the save that he's done in here. So just just look at the wheel here. I don't know how he kept it on the track. I would I would probably spin like three times at, that, at this point. I mean, okay, it wasn't really funny for him, I guess, but, you know, just Straight made my day a lot better because now I'm leading the race again I just found myself in the place where it is kind of yeah and I don't know unfortunate for others but very fortunate oh, for me now. and just find yourself in the first place and leading at a race like this without really making a huge mistakes it's kind of it, as I said before it kind of feels good it might not feel right but it feels good and I had a kind of a good gap it was almost 1.5 and I just thought to myself but no, I mean, is it really worth it just pushing over the next lap? I mean, it, honestly, it wasn't really that worth it. Just this car had a lot of pace on the straight. I mean, he was very, very far behind. I mean, not very far behind, just one little mistake and he could have got me. But the gap went down to 1.1 and I crossed the finish line and it was a win. So just to close up this week, it was a pretty interesting and also successful week for me. And... You know, just at the end of this video, I just try to give a look and what happened in this race? Where are people making mistakes and why is this actually called a dead chicane? Or is it really called dead chicane? Kind of curb. Cur it's kind of curb of that, but it's also a chicane. But just that I'm, so watching this, I can, you know, I can really find myself in the similar spot. I mean, I did a couple of times in this week, but, you know, just look at the curbs i think curbs in in the game especially on this track have to be flattened out because i think it's so frustrating for like 90 percent of the guys that are racing here it's just i don't know but it's getting this track i don't know how to even call it but it's getting very unpopular even you know even just if you miss your breaking point if you just you know like this guy he just quit i mean what else could he do but i think yeah just flattening it out a couple of curves curbs can make this track a lot better so just i was i was watching the re replays here and i thought to myself do we really need curbs like these do we really need it i mean I, I think the answer is no but you can also help me answer this question down in the comments and by the way guys i hope you like this video and if you did you can always smash the like button i do appreciate that stuff and you might even want to subscribe to the channel. So once again, see you next time. Bye.